A Good Man is the Steven Seagal movie where he showed the world what it already knew all along. Are you for real? Not really. It's all fake. And as long as you don't give a shit, I really don't give a fuck. You can easily pump out a movie over a weekend. It starts off by not wasting any time and gets straight to the nonsense. There is no darkness without light. Without light, all you have is darkness. I have both within me. No, he doesn't. But don't worry, because somehow it's all downhill from here. Yeah, it's impressive. He proves it by not even finishing the opening credits. You're about 20 miles off from target before taking off to lunch. Is there any good restaurants around here? It's a Seagal movie, and he doesn't do second takes, so they were forced to just go with it. Yeah, that's a negative on the restaurant's go. Seagal immediately had that man killed. He's the leader of an elite group of something they never bother telling us. What the f*** is that? And his target is an Islamic fundamentalist, a Chaikam arms dealer, and finances terrorist activities. And lives in Romania. In order to take out such a versatile villain, he puts together an elite team of the biggest action stars who will agree to work with him. Well, we gotta go. So, the Pretendables plan to infiltrate the enemy's base using stealth and only take out the guards if completely necessary. But something about this unconscious and defenseless guard really pisses Seagal off, so f the plan. Now that Seagal's got a taste of human blood, his partner knows things are gonna get f***ing weird, so he gets the hell out of there. The first thing Seagal does is his trademark sword slap with the sword he magically has now, before stuffing it down his shirt for reasons I don't want to know. Then he peeks through the window and sees a bunch of women and children. Jackpot! He blows the door open and rains down hellfire on any poor son of a bitch that happens to be in there. Even though the target leaves, Seagal doesn't give a shit cause he's in the fucking zone. He orders a drone strike to eliminate any witnesses. But he's already done a lot of walking today, so instead of getting out of the blast radius, he tells this little girl he gets that her dad's dead, but we all got problems, now get over here, and uses her as a human shield. Then, after she takes the brunt of the explosion, he does the biggest dick move and pile drives her into the fucking ground. Now, it's two years later, and Seagal still has recurring dreams where he's Humpty Dumpty being put back together before waking up in a cold sweat. Some things never change. His neighbor needs him to break into her apartment. Are you locked out? Which is so crazy because he was planning on doing that anyways. He brings his service dog to try and fool them into thinking he's a real person, but his cover is blown when he couldn't even think up a f***ing name. What's his name? I just never named him. Later, Seagal goes to scope out the local kindergarten, but the little girl happens to be there, and as soon as he's recognized, Hey, where's your dog? He turns around and gets the f*** out. This is her brother, who's already heard all about their creepy neighbor. That's the man I've been telling you about. Seagal makes a beeline to this church to establish an alibi and has finally mastered the art of blending in by telling the priest that he's just browsing. Just looking around. Like it's a fucking furniture store. Then, because he's so into adults, his next stop is a strip club where he ignores all the strippers and randomly assaults the customers. <laughs> When Seagal returns home, he runs into these guys who want to know why he killed their friend in the strip club. So he apologizes and tells them things just got out of hand and, just kidding, he pulls a sword out of his ass again and murders the f 
out of them too. Then he drops incense that he carries around at all times just to be a prick and annoy the police. Then he makes his escape by teleport waddling away. Now the police show up and do exactly what they're trained to do. Again with the incense. Talk about how awesome Seagal is. The killer obviously is very skilled with a knife. And how anyone who gets in his way is fucked. Warning. But the question is, a warning to whom? The local Russian mafia boss has a meeting with the local Chinese mafia boss. And wouldn't you know it, it's the Chinese communist Islamic terrorist arms dealer that Seagal rescued earlier. It turns out he and Seagal have a lot in common. Proclivity for beautiful Russian girls. The younger the better. The Russian boss is there to find out who killed his men. And now he's pretty sure it was the brother. Yeah, how'd you know? It's a Seagal movie. Oh, shit. So the fact that he was with you when they were fucking killed somehow never comes up. So he sends the world's worst hitman who misses from right fucking here. He can't believe that dumb shit either, but you need to get over it because we're only halfway through this atrocity. The sister gets home from work and starts to panic when it looks like Seagal finally broke in. She's overcome with relief though when it turns out to just be the Russians who are there to traffic her and her little sister. Keep her safe. So Seagal goes to tell them he already called dibs and when they don't back down, go back to your room waddles back into his apartment and sends his body double out to show them he means business. But they escape with the little girl who they offer to the Chinese boss as a gift. This is the sister. He tells them they're really fucking stupid. Are you gaming me? And he knows what he said. The younger the better. But he's not Seagal and this isn't what he meant. But he decides to keep her. I want to keep the girl. Because he knows someone that will pay top dollar. In the meantime, Seagal does what Seagal does best. While creeping around the bathroom, murdering innocent people, he just happens to run into the Russian boss. <laughs> He takes him hostage, and even the dog refuses to watch cause he's seen this stupid shit a hundred times before. Seagal tortures him the way college kids f with the drunk guy who passed out at the party. I guess it's gonna be a long night. After drawing penises on his cheek and forehead, he draws up some coffee and squirts it up his nose. <laughs> He tells Seagal he'll give him whatever he wants if he'll please have some self-respect. No fucking deal. <laughs> when Seagal finally finishes satisfying his sadistic urges, he stops by the church and finds someone went crazy in there and really fucked that priest up. Seagal doesn't remember if it was him during one of his blackouts, so to cover himself either way, he just stands there confused for literally 10 seconds before saying the craziest shit you will ever hear. Cause now, I will snatch every motherfucker birthday. The priest has no idea what the f that's supposed to mean and is hoping he's not just suffering a massive concussion or died and this is hell. Now it's 12 hours later and not only has Seagal not even snatched one motherfucker birthday. I will snatch every motherfucker birthday. But he's barely moved from that spot. Since Seagal's been standing there, the brother was taken prisoner, <laughs> escaped by taking the hinges off a sliding door, jump kicked a cop into fire, <laughs> and flew through the air like the fucking matrix. But spending 12 hours packing this fucking bag is cool too, you lazy f So anyways, he goes to the Chinese leader in order to buy the little girl he's selling. He means rescue because he definitely knew it was her. But it turns out- I changed my mind. He's selling her to Adam Scott instead because he's a much bigger celebrity and that's just the kind of shit 
Adam Scott does. That's when Seagal drops the bombshell. I love for them. No, not that. Everybody knows that. I mean the other bombshell. I'm not a man. Motherfucker. We'll talk about that later. The bombshell is that he was the one killing his men and leaving the incense. I'm well Except they weren't his men, they were the Russians. We're going to be out of Russian soon. So he has no idea what the fuck he's talking about. So it is. Seagal takes advantage of all the confusion and the bad guys insisting on aiming and looking when they shoot and randomly blasts around the room, which kills the guards and Adam Scott. Still not satisfied, he chases down the production assistant and chops his fucking hand off. Then, after Seagal and this guy slap each other's swords for a while, it's down to just him and the Chinese boss. He shows us that they don't call him Confucius for nothing. Look at the total summation of your whole life. Is this it? Well said. F you! No, it wasn't. They go back and forth with this stupid shit. It took an adversary to show me the significance of life and death. Until Seagal's watch beeps to let him know the movie's hit 90 minutes and he's working for free right now. So now he's dead and the movie ends. Nope. F you! A Seagal movie can't end without a giant middle finger to the audience. When they get back home, she tells her little sister, Sorry, but I'm banging Seagal now, so you need to get the fuck out. Smart. This scene is very important, so you never forget how terrible of a human being Steven Seagal is. Well, I'm sorry to hear that.